Professor Devolina Gumotakutta is an assistant professor and currently head in the Department of English of Sri Shikshatan College, Kolkata. She completed her master's in English and MPhil in Women's Studies from Jadavpur University. With teaching experience in both UG and PG level of almost 10 years in different capacities, she has presented papers in international, national and state level seminars and conferences. She has also published papers as conference proceedings and in journals. Her area of interest is gender studies, the 19th century British literature, Bengal Renaissance and performance studies. Apart from her academic interest, she is associated with All India Radio as a singer and presenter. Over to you, Professor Guhota Kutta. Thank you, Shomrita, and thank you, Onik. Am I uh, audible? Yes, you, you are perfectly audible. Okay, thank you. And uh, at first, I would express my gratitude to the principal of the college for uh, taking such an initiative in, in these uh, very uncertain, uh, uncertain times. Mm -hmm. And I would also uh, thank uh, Shomrita Onik and uh, the organizing committee, Professor Shudip Khan, for inviting me to deliver the talk. And I have been uh, listening to all the sessions right from yesterday. And I must congratulate all the speakers for their wonderful talk and for such new uh, informative and enlightening lectures. And even I'm so enlightened because uh, teaching is also a learning experience and that is how I look at it. But uh, my uh, discussion will be uh, something uh, in this, in this uh, unprecedented crisis that we are all going through, uh, living through uh, uncertainty and uh, a kind of fear, a phobia, a paranoia. I think uh, let us all delve into the world of uh, nonsense uh, through Shukumar Rai's Abul Tabul. But yes, I, I would like to uh, begin with uh, this, uh, uh, on this note that uh, when I was reading on, on Abul Tabul more and more for this presentation, and I read uh, one piece and I found that that's, that's very pertinent now as well, now as well is that uh, on the 100th anniversary uh, in 1932 of uh, Carol, uh, Chesterton expressed his dreadful fear that uh, the story of Alice had been taken over by literary scholars and would not exist simply for uh, pleasure of reading it. So that is also a predicament uh, with Abul Tabul of Shukumar Rai. Uh, Anyway, uh, we all grew up with Abul Tabul in our own way. And uh, let me uh, look at Abul Tabul. My, 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 uh, uh, I would be more uh, interested in, because I have designed this uh, talk as a way to reach out to the students. Uh, and of course, the choice was not deliberate. I consulted uh, with my friend Onik, and uh, I found this very pertinent as well. So I have designed it in a manner so that uh, uh, I, I look at the, uh, uh, the, the continental as well as uh, the influences, uh, historical trajectory uh, journey, as well as uh, how Shukumar Rai is questioning, interrogating, uh, challenging uh, the then uh, political, social thoughts of the time through the, uh, the nonsense uh, verse of Abul Dhab. Uh, so, uh, as I would like to begin, uh, the pendulum of the mind, uh, Shomrita, I hope I'm clearly audible. Uh, yes, yes, you are perfectly yes, audible. Lindy. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, the pendulum of the mind alternates uh, between sense and nonsense. Now, uh, this quote of Carl Jung talks of an interesting interface between sense and nonsense, and the uh, uh, nonsense often marginalized and considered fanciful always presupposes sense. Rather, nonsense is always already sense. Our familiarity with the word sense corresponds either to
Devolina Di, you are not audible. I think there are some network issues. Devolina Di, can you hear me? I think there are some network issues. Um, I think we can wait a little bit till he comes back. Yes, 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 certainly. Please bear with us. I think she will rejoin soon. Is my audible Shumrita now? Yes, you are audible, Didi. Yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Just let me know whenever it's such, you know, we are so dependent on technology now. Um, okay. So our familiarity with the word sense corresponds either to the sense organs or the constitutional tax that allows adjustment, recognition, and maintenance of affairs in ordinary life. Uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the antonym of sense is nonsense, something that is foolish, impractical, whimsical, and so on. Now, to endow it with a definition is to, to order the already disorderly, which is, which is its virtue. Uh, now, does that mean nonsense has no sense, or to put it otherwise, does nonsense have more sense? Uh, the domain of sense, however, is discovered as a condition of truth that too might be, again, uh, might remain incorporeal, whereas nonsense embodies neither truth nor false. It rather breaks the ground rule of the normative or the, or the shared reality of everyday transactions and uh, creates its own set of rules fundamental to an aesthetic experience. And I, I take this idea from Rapkin's uh, The Fantastic in Literature, published in 1976. Uh, as participants in this fantastic world, readers willingly suspend their disbelief and enter into uh, a sub-creation where a talking plant, a dragon-like cre dragon creature with an overcoat, requires certain legitimization. As readers, we engage into the delightful world of phantasmagoria, but to critique nonsense, these incongruities and absurdities appear to be the work of intense imagination and genius, and one of fine arts, as Tracius uh, talked about. Uh, the slidey, the mimsy, apparently nonsense, bears meaning in that world of, uh, in that fantastic world. Indeed, nonsense literature has been categorized as part of the macrocosm of children's literature, though critics have also discussed about the kind of power imbalance in the ideologically fraught relation of the adult writer and the child reader. Nevertheless, a total uh, that is a stork and a turtle, will startle a child's fancy, while the beastly conjugation of a stork and a turtle will trigger deeper thoughts for an inquisitive scholar. And that is what we are doing now. Uh, these unusual creatures give us aesthetic shock because we have accepted the premise that animals are divided into or labeled as. Again, if nonsense literature reveals the unexpected, such presumption again, is a bit of misnomer. To not expect something is not equal to a complete upturn of the order of expectation. Nonsense verges on the disexpected. Rapkin believes that this disexpected is frequent in fantastic. It is equally true in case of nonsense literature. Uh, the Rutledge Dictionary of Critical Terms defines fantastic as a combination of the real and the supernatural and argues that such text depends on readers' perplexity while grappling with the meaning of the text. Uh, fantastic primarily dwells in the realm of this beyond natural, while nonsense upturns the natural, creating a world of topsy-turvydom of apparent meaninglessness. Uh, Chesterton, in his defense of nonsense, uh, claimed that in spite of the remarkable progress of science and philosophy in the 19th century, the most adventurous growth was to be found in the literature of the nonsense. 
the anarchic potential of nonsense to question the material reality of the world is fundamental to nonsense verse literature, particularly in case of Shukumar Rai's verse. The deliberate irrationality of nonsense is skillfully legitimized. Its illogicality becomes illogic in itself. Such literature demonstrates the sliding of nature of signification, the lack of any fixity, and impossibility of meaning through parody, playfulness of words. Uh, the indulgence into the nonsense by Lear and Carol, and even Shukumar, was perhaps turning into a form of uh, a for, uh, some, some sort of imaginary or some sort of uh, pleasurable activity, particularly in case of Shukumar, the last verse of Abul Tabul. Uh, undoubtedly was an expression of a pleasant pain and, and a painful pleasure. I'll come to that and how uh, the, the whole of Abul Tabul uh, is, uh, completes the cycle. There is a kind of circularity. It begins with Abul Tabul, it ends with Abul Tabul as well. Uh, the history of nonsense literature dates back to the medieval and Renaissance Europe. Uh, but as a genre, it gained momentum in the 19th century in the master hands of Lear and Carroll. Uh, literary historians and researchers often differ in considering the timelessness of nonsense, its status as a cultural historical product and its dependence on certain formal procedures of reputation, circularity, simultaneity. Uh, according to Noel Malcolm, and the book that I'm referring to here is The Origins of English Nonsense. Nonsense poetry emerged as a literary genre with its particular history or histories which were developed by individual poets and had a close relation to the high literary conventions of the day. However, evidences of nonsense or near nonsense existed in Germany, France, Italy, Spain. In the medieval and Renaissance times, a close semblance of which was found in the 17th century verses written by Hoskin sometime in 1611, who was a lawyer, a rhetorician, minor poet and a wit. Although the history of early European nonsense poetry is obscure, uh, a curious reader shall find a complex and rather overlapping succession of styles and genres across cultures. To Malcolm, nonsense poetry was a quintessentially literary phenomenon that was invented and reinvented with time. By virtue of being a criticism of life and bringing in confusion to order, uh, and turning everything upside down and spawning the impossible, absurd, unnatural combinations, nonsense literature remained a source of universal delight. The laughter that it generated was an expression of surprise at seeing things out of place. Uh, the earliest known nonsense poetry was written by a German who died sometime in 1210. Uh, a few lines of unmis unmistakable nonsense survive in his oeuvre, forming the first stanza of a three stanza poem. And uh, there is a list of bizarre reversals of the natural order using the traditional poetic rhetorical device called impossibility. I'm just reading out a few lines of, the say, of, of that uh, poetry, which is in translation here. Uh, uh, the boar hunts with hares, setting a poor example. A feeble hen flies up and catches a faucon. Then the cart goes in front of the oxen. The sack drags the donkey to the mill. An old knack turns into a filly. This is what one sees into the world turned upside down. So that is the translation of the original German piece. Several poets wrote similar pieces during the 13th century, framing its own stock forms and conventions, like I came riding on a goose into a land where I found apes and fools. In this way, the nonsense genre was able to stand more freely in its own right as a display of the poet's own inventiveness. Uh, the medieval German genre was known as Jugenddichtung, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, or lie poetry. Uh, the content of this poem came from adapting a range of stock literary devices. These included several types of impossibilia, like reversal of roles by animals, hence seizing hawks, hare hunting with a faucon, uh, the, the, the animalization of inanimate objects, like the flying millstones, and the performance by animals of complex human activities like building, like, uh, like spinning. Uh, so these lie poetry uh, poems or Jugendichtung genre of German nonsense poetry enjoyed a quite long life. But its high point was undoubtedly reached in the 14th and 15th centuries. This medieval German nonsense poetry seemed to have influenced writers in both England and France, especially England, 
In, in England, only a handful of narrative animal nonsense poems survived from the Middle Ages, written probably in the mid 15th century, and they bear close resemblance to German Jugendnichtstum. Uh, the other type of impossibilia cultivated by the German genre that influenced English poem was a subcategory of impossibilia in which the incapacitated persons acted as if they had full or even extraordinary possession of their faculties. And I again read out an example. I saw three headless men playing ball. One handless man served them all. While three mouthless men lay and laughed, three legless men drove him away. So that is how it, uh, it was. Uh, Malcolm writes that such imitated fragments finally entered the, the uh, the stock of orally transmitted folk poetry. Uh, in France, nonsense poetry was called fatuities, believed to be riddles with specific personal and political meanings. Uh, scholars argue that these 11 line verses evolved in connection with a literary game, sort of parody of the courtly poetry. Uh, however, these poems shared the fundamental character of nonsense poetry with that of its German original, that is, putting together strings of impossibilia to effect a sort of uh, a comic uh, absurdity. Italy also we find uh, the nonsense poetry which flourished sometime in the 14th century uh, in, in either an elegant and literary style or in a more personal, personal and colloquial way, colloquial expression. So nonsense was therefore was worked, reworked, recreated across cultures in medieval and Renaissance Europe. Uh, and as uh, and also, we also find, as George Orwell also has talked about it in his uh, essay, Nonsense Poetry, that the Mad Talk in Shakespeare was also, uh, uh, it also helped in the evolution of this literary form. Uh, when coming to uh, John Hoskins, uh, uh, he was a learned scholar and lawyer and one of the principal members of the Mermaid Club. Uh, a quatrain uh, of the 1644-45 pamphlet, uh, Aqu Aquamuse, claimed about the ideological significance of nonsense poetry and is relevant when we look at Chukumar's nonsense that came as a reaction to the colonial subjugation, literary, religious dogmatism, and social discrimination. And I read that uh, section from Aquamuse. And is not this rare nonsense, we tell, much like thy writing, if men mark it well. For nonsense is rebellion, and thy writing is nothing but a rebellious wall's Uh The impossibilia that was found in German poetry, the French poetry, was imbricated into this continental journey, and the apparently absurd, illogical, bizarre reversal of the natural order uh, that was uh, in order using the traditional poetic rhetoric, rhetorical device of impossibilia rendered a chaotic world of nonsense. This reversal offered a sort of incongruity loaded with a kind of inherent instability, uh, which was achieved through hyperbolic impossibilia, exaggeration, excess, which also we'll find in Shukumar's verses, a category proposed by Malcolm in his discussion. Uh, it often happened that these nonsensical poems shifted from mere literary nonsense to comic satirical verses. Uh, another very cryptic category was logical or a physical impossibilia. And what were they? They were primarily, say, the dumb man speaking or the lame man dancing. Uh, however, uh, the dense, uh, uh, however dense the literary history of nonsense literature is in the West, uh, especially its continent, continental origin and development. The rich heritage of Bengal folk literature and rhymes is as ancient as uh, Bengali people. This literature has been uh, has uh, been lived and relived through ages, transmitted orally through generations. Uh, Tagore's versatile mind became deeply interested in the traditional folk culture uh, that led to his pioneering effort in the field of rhyme collection and elaborate writing on the subject. It is worthwhile to mention in this context the first essay, Chele Bula no Chora, from his collection of essays, Loko Shahitto, which was published sometime in 1907. And uh, to quote Tagore, the characteristic primitive and natural rasa essence 
associated with children's rhymes attracted me to their preservation. Shukumar also talks about Khyal Rasa as a kind of apology right at the beginning of Abu Tabu. Uh, this sense of primitiveness may not be appealing to everyone, but certainly no one can doubt that it is our duty to collect these rhymes for posterity. Uh, of course, one of the uh, unquote, uh, one of the principal objectives of Tagore was perhaps to build up children's literature rooted in Indian culture and tradition to, in a way, thwart the missionary influence. Uh, examples of such rhymes are ubiquitous. It was, however, jo Jogindranath Shorkar, a young Brahmo school teacher, who appeared with an excellent collection of nonsense rhymes called Kukumoni Chora sometime in 1899, rhymes for a little girl. And example may be Kothayamar uh, Chadmoni, Muchki Hashi Mukhani. It was in the lengthy introduction to this volume that Ramindra Shundra Trivedi, folk enthusiast, coined the phrase Shishu Shahito or children's literature that became a descriptive term for many vernacular genres. In this context, Jogindranath established, uh, let me also talk about Jogindranath established the City Book Society in 1896 which published Chhele Del Ramayana of Upendra Kishore Rai, uh, uh, of Upendra Kishore. Uh, Ure and Sons, however, served the delis uh, delicious Shondesh in uh, 1913 with the first children's magazine edited by, while well, the first children's magazine edited by Gyanodhanundini Devi uh, was Balok. The first issue came out sometime in March, April 1885. So the turn of the century uh, in, 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 in India vis-a-vis -vis Bengal uh, was very remarkable in the development of uh, uh, development evolution of Shishu Shahito or uh, children's literature. Uh, uh, the Ghumparan, uh, now nonsense rhymes in Bengali literature is often by critics broadly divided into three categories. Ghumparani Chora, which is Lalavi, uh, Chile Bulano Chora, that incorporate all use of rhymes for children, popularly known as nursery rhymes. And the third category, uh, is mainly chora related to agricultural magic. Uh, the commonality between these categories is impossible, yeah, again. Say, for example, ilating bilating shoilo, raja moshai ekti balika chailo. Apparently, this couplet reminds us of the playful actions of the girls playing, again, seemingly meaningless. Uh, but a close reading reveals the bereaved tale of the concubine system. That was there. Raja Masha Yekti Balika Chailu, and then the name of the Balika, and the Balika is being taken. Uh, during the uh, uh, initial uh, during the initial years of the Bengal Renaissance, Tom Paine's book Age of Reason received a commendable popularity among the Bengali intelligentsia and the progressive educated middle class. The Jerusians and the Brahmos, radicals as they were quoted verbatim from his book to raise theological questions targeting the Hindu orthodoxy. This book was also instrumental in kindling questions about the norm, the belief that was there in people's mind. A remarkable example may be the last two lines of Proshno by, of, of the poem Proshno by Tagore from his anthology, Shishu, where the child, the poet and guys asks, Rater bala dupur jodi hoi, dupur bala raat hobe na kano. Uh, it is this upturning of the order of meaning that nonsense attempts to within the systemic bounds of signification. Tagore, in fact, believed that the timeless anonymous rhymes, uh, though might refract snippets of history, like Hokagumalo, Parajuralo, Burgielo, Deshe, lacked didactic intent as their disconnected vignettes and diffuse images like Noton Noton Pairaguli Choton Betliche flew along at their own speed. Uh, the benign nonsensicality of their oddities, exciting and pleasing the child mind. Uh, such, such is the association with Abul Tabul by Shukumar Rai, the verses that have allowed pleasant excitement and amusing joy when we read and reread Chichuri, Gokchuri, Chotpatro, and so on. I'm sorry, uh, I will again also, to, I, will, I will also give the names of the uh, English translated poems, but the way we all have grew up with Shukumara's Abul Tabul, uh, so familiar with Khichuri and uh, Shotpatro rather than hodgepodge and groomy tidings. Uh, Yuri and Sons launched Shondesh in May 1913, and Shukumar's Khichuri, hodgepodge, 
first appeared in 1914 after his return from England, where he went to take advanced training in printing technology. Uh, evidence of Shukumar's talent as a poet was found in Shivnath Shastri's children's magazine, Mukul, that came out again in 1895. Uh, but his ingenuity found expression in early two plays, Jhalapala, Cacophony, and Lokhune Shokti Shell, Lakshman and the Wonder Weapon. The members, mostly friends of his nonsense club, which ran a magazine called Share Butrish Bhaja, Savory Mix, performed these plays. Even before them, Shukumar wrote Ramdhan Bodh, a parodic piece on Ramdan Sahib, as we gather from Punnalota's account, Punnalota, his sister and an ardent follower of Shukumar, observed. And his ignominious defeat, Ramdan Sahib's ignominious defeat by the local boys, when they keep on shouting, Bande Mataram, and, and in front of Ramdan Sahib. These early works reveal the young adolescent sensitive mind of Shukumar, who could expose the angst through parodic representations. Uh, later, Shukumar started with the Monday Club, or Monda Shambelon Candy Club, sometime in 1915, with eminent thinkers, scholars, composers of the time, like Shotendranath Dotto, Prashanta Chandra Mahulanopish, Prabhat Kumar Gangopadhyay, Otul Prashad Shen, uh, Kali Dashnag, Shumiti Kumar Chattopadhyay, and many more. Shishir Kumar Dotto was the secretary who, once absent, the members received a postcard with the message, Shampadok Beyakut Puthaje Dieche Du. And uh, later on, I can read out this, this one message that given in the postcard. And we see that this kind of uh, expression, playing with words, ideas, was there in Shukumar, and he grew up with that. Thus, born and brought up in an illustrious family of Renesa Bengal in an environment of mirth and rebellion, nonsense was perhaps an easy choice, if not deliberate, by the poet. In the year 1914, uh, appeared Khichuri, interestingly, the year of World War I, which provided a, sam a sample of excellent imaginative world born out of language. Amidst such crafty means of annihilation and the leaders engaged themselves, that the leaders engaged themselves with during the World War. Shukumar at the outset stated with Elam, defying the grammarians, Bakoron Manina, Hashchilo Shajaru, Bakoron Manina. Inheriting the nonsense tradition of that of Tarol, the portmanteau words introduced us to new animals like Hashcharu, that is Porkuda or Porkuchad, Bokotchop, Stortle or Stortoise, Welephant, Parakizad, and so on. These whimsical compounds or coinages played with the rules, defying grammar, rather convention, was therefore not to bring chaos as an alternative, but substituting another regularity for the expected one. The unexpected juxtaposition moved to absurdism, while to overturn the oppressive customs worked as an undertow. For example, Parakizad, Tiyamukho Girgiti, an intriguing corporation suggesting the opportunist bourgeois section of the society who were flatterers in the guise of honesty and sincerity. Beginning with this aesthetic shock, Shukumar has continued to create a series of unusual animals, or as Shottojit Rai puts it, zoological medley, lug-headed loon, the blighty cow, the griffonling, the pumpkin puff. Uh, these creations have gained currency in colloquial Bengal, the healthy men, rather the fat men, are Kumru Potash, Grave and serious men are griffonling, indisposed to mirth, while the Anglophiles, the Babus, are the blighty cows, dash guru, the dreamy eyes, twice bent horns, again, marker of pride, but frail in nature, for it bursts out sobbing for nothing at all. So that is how uh, Professor Shukanto Chodhuri translates Shukumar. Shukumar. The Palayan moustache is an excellent example of excess. In this context, I would also refer to Buddha Bushu's classification of Shukumar's nonsense into three broad categories. Poems like Gopchuri, Kataputuburo, Katburo, Danpite, Gane uh, They belong to the class of human emotions exaggerated. Absurd poems are Khichuri, Kumru Potash, Hokumukho Hangla, Tashkuru. Uh, Hokumukho Hangla being lug headed loon and Tashkuru the blighty cow. Uh, Finally, the satires like Shotpatro, Rumi Tidings, Ram Guru Re Chana, uh, uh, the, 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 the Griffon's Grouse, uh, Hature, Quack, Narod Narod, 
Ekushain, rule of 21. However, there are overlaps. In Palo and Mustache, for example, Ray questioned not only the shallow ideas of masculinity, but also his illustration emphasizes the hollowness of masculine virility. The sketch shows the dirty broom, like coarse and scary whiskers, which can only be of the lout that runs the local dairy. A subtle hint at the class discrimination. Amun Bhuktar Akhtojani, Shambhavudir, Goyla. Uh, while the entire poem centers on the alleged loss of the mustache, it underscores the absurd, petty, bureaucratic jobs of an inconsequential government officer. The last line of the verse, it's whiskers now that make, ma make the man, and they are our work, and they are our lords and masters. Uh, it names the vainglorious pride of the boss babu, the satire against the polished, educated, genteel, emerging genteel society is evident in other poems of other collection, like in Khai Khai, uh, poems like Tejian, Jiboner Hisha, and other uh, poems also, for example, Babu. Uh, all of them have endorsed, uh, uh, all of them have talked about this kind of emerging, uh, emergent class of Babus. Uh, the great serious men are also ridiculed, like the Grafonling, living in isolation, and disinclined to any high-spiritedness with a melancholic countenance. Laugh or grind is a sin, like the deadly sins, with the visage always very grim and bitter. He puts a placard in front, laughter stands forbidden, Hashi uh, The lug-headed loom, found only in Bangla, was the first to arrive as a zoological medley. Sitting isolated in dumb isolation, the once dancing lug, now ponders whether he could overpower a sly bug with his double tails. If the nails are indicate, if the tails are indicative of pride of erudite men of the time, the verse also cuts across the busy idle diversions of such babus. And I think that is equally true in case of uh, in case of uh, uh, boss babu, head of Kishir Boro Babu, who is uh, who has nothing else to do but express exact in in, in a much uh, excessive way. Uh, exaggerated way his emotions. Uh, a, a similar satiric tone works through Tashkur or the Blighty Cow. The neatly placed sleek black curls undoubtedly recalls Chokchoke Chul Chata, Tai Tofa Teri Kata, Shonar Choshma Ata Nashikai, which is from the poem Babu from the collected edition of Shukumar Rai. I, there, is a, there is a PPT which I have just few slides, just to show the pictures to relate both of them. Such distorted taste and sensibilities of the evolving genteel Bhadrulog Babus, who prefer soap soups and tallow candles over typical Bengali cuisine, has become the object of fun and satire. Interestingly, these unusual creatures does not dwell in a remote, distant world, uh, though isolated they are, but are either found in Haru's office or in and around the locality. Shukumar's satire at times seems to be against the false hypocrisy that became a cultural practice of the time. For instance, in Lokhune Shokti Shel, Lakshman and the Wonder Wep Weapon, Shukri vehemently protests when Bibishan asks him to learn manners, perhaps of men. And I quote from uh, Lokhune Shokti Shel, Manush bolle kano hai, khamu ka gali dit kano. So to compare Shukri uh, with humans is abusive to him. The other set of eccentric pedants of whom Shukumar was fond of were the men of science. In poems like Katburo, the old man of the wood, Big and Shikha, the pursuit of science, Chaya, uh, uh, the shadow catcher, uh, Chonmi Dash's uncle, Khunor Kol. Uh, although the boss babu is equally eccentric, but in this set of poems, the poet intrudes into the world of science through such startling theories and grotesque imagination of science scholars. Uh, the timber technologist, the inventor of penetroscope, uh, though scorned by the society, but found a comfortable place in the, in the, in the poet's world. Uh, again, in this context, I would also refer to, say, for example, in Kat Buro, where uh, uh, Akashete Jhul Jhole Kathetai Gortto, 
this this eccentricism this obsession with science it also reminds me of uh, rakshikar bosu parashuram's birinji baba where uh, professor noni is is uh, uh, not really a professor but he is called a professor by his friends uh, uh he is uh, uh, he is performing an experiment a weird experiment with harmonium which uh, which, which is being bellowed so that there is an oxidation process and 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 the the, the grass are being boiled so that uh, protein uh, it will lead to protein synthesis which will uh, then further uh, lead to uh, the hydrolyzation of grass which will produce carbohydrate and i quote from birinji baba ঘাস সেদ্ধ হচ্ছে ঘাস হাইড্রোলাইজ হলে কার্বোহাইড্রেট হবে সো দিস কাইন্ড অফ অবসেশন উইথ সাইন্স ওয়াজ अगेन समथिंग व्हिच वी आल्सो फाइंड इन পরশুরামস ফিউ স্টোরিজ अगेन পরশুরাম ওয়াজ আলসো আ ম্যান অফ সাইন্স হি ওয়াজ ফ্রম কেমিস্ট্রি এন্ড সুকুমার ওয়াজ আলসো ডাবল অনার্স ইন ফিজিক্স এন্ড কেমিস্ট্রি ফ্রম প্রেসিডেন্স সো দেয়ারফর দে রেপ্রিমান্ড টু দ্য ইগনোরেন্ট সোলস গোস who cares for these matters of weight i'm sick of these people all doltish and blind utterly dead to a scientist's goal so this is what katguru says uh, in this context i would also refer to shibaji bondopadhyay's elaborate observation in gopal rakhal dondo samash upanibesh bhat bangla shishu sahitya on the human characters in shukma's world that displayed a common trait they were deeply alienated from the world around them uh their unswerving dedication noble intention they were absolutely uncared for by the society if on the one hand shukumar was affiliating himself to the literature associated with science he was also into the tradition of prohoshon that caricatured these erudite eccentrics or boiganic babus uh shukumar's parodic uh or ironic representations challenged or at best interrogated the conventions or scholastic parameters that endorsed diligence devotion development this deliberate yet subtle attempt to trivialize the imperial agenda was praiseworthy the satiric spirit of shukumar on the of, uh, on the obsessed men of science and their exalted notion of invention had an uncanny similarity with the punch magazine uh, the punch comic journal of the 1840s the principal objective of this comic journal in 1841 which came out in the year 1841 was to lampoon the selfless pursuit of knowledge uh, and i quote from uh, uh, the punch sham gentility vulgar ostentation silly affectations of fashion which were the targets an ideal punch caricature would be the dhoti clad figure with a telescope who fiercely advances towards the wailing boy who shouts in utter despair to peer into his head with the penetroscope to measure the capacities in his brain uh, and as shibaji bondopadhyay writes and i quote the uber intelligent man is preoccupied with scientifically measuring the boy's intelligence by placing a magnet on his head so of course i hope you understand this is from the pursuit of science began shikha another example is the invention kulor call a grand contrivance fixed upon the shoulder with a rod in front to hang the most enticing food and it is the vice of gluttony that would hasten the speed uh, such dehumanizing aspects of scientific inventions in the name of fashion were challenged through these satires and uh, in this context again it reminds me khunor uh, kol may be written sometime between 1914 uh, and the final publication of abul tabul in 1923 and uh, in 1936 we find uh, uh, uh we find modern times and velos feeding machine that popular scene you know, in in chaplin's modern times with that velos feeding machine which comes and we can see how dehumanizing it is uh the rule of 21 ekushyain is another potent example of satiric attack on the hollow rituals and cultural practices of the society uh, just uh, shomrita am I, am i audible it's going fine hey just on yes yes tv okay absolutely okay okay uh so ekushyain of the rule of 21 begins hailing lord shiva's native land as an anarchic territory shiv thakur ad apun deshe ayin kanun shorbon deshe uh much like the early radicals the rosians uh, shukumar was critical about the meaningless customs of hinduism the illustration by shukumar is significant Uh, i have uh, i have a, as i said i have a ppt which I, at the end i'll just 
run through the PPT once. The two dimensional geometric sketch validated the machination process of human desires. Uh, the native land of Shiva is therefore a land of dogmatism, rule, dictatorial in nature. And this again reminds me of, uh, of uh, um, Tagore's Tashitesh, land of gods, where free will is denied, and which again harps on the thoughtless pursuance of rules. And the dissenting voice is, the, of course, the voice of the prince. Uh, so here, the dissenting way to speak out against is nonsense. Uh, Shotpatru, marriage is announced. Bombagore Raja, the land of Bombagore, Kataputu Buru, Tickle My Rips. Sorry, Baburam Shapure, Snakes Alive, and many more. Ray's brilliant craftsmanship is putting up, in putting up social criticism through nonsense was inimitable. Then there are 45 pieces according to the collected edition of Shukumar Rai, volume one, Shukumar Shahitya Shamogra, published by Anandu Publishers as a centenary publication. So it isn't really possible to go through all the 45 pieces, but each and every uh, uh, piece comes out with some, some uh, 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 criticism, some sort of social or political criticism or absurd on the whole. His mastery over language, his artistry, his keen observation, all contributed to this brilliant collection, Abul Tabul, that uh, though designed by Ray himself, was posthumously published nine days after his untimely death in 1923. Uh, to quote Shivaji Pandavadha again, the more familiar, more real world of Abul Tabul is perhaps really known to us, and therefore it facilitates the ability to understand the half known everyday world more deeply and untangled reality. Abu Tabul begins with an apology. This book is a work of Khyal Rosh, meaning whimsy, uh, unlike, the comic ro co uh, unlike the comic or the wondrous, that is Hashto and Adbhut of the nine uh, rasas that we find in Abhinav Bharti. This rasa, Khyal Rosh, is expressed as Ray enunciates through the absurd, impossible, and the weird. Uh, Wim Tiggs, in his book, Anatomy of Literary Nonsense, drew up a map of the degrees and kinds of nonsense and fantasy and where they stand in relation to one another. Uh, though he advised to consider it as a, as a rough indication uh, uh, how the scales develop rather than a fixed and firm categorization. Indeed, nonsense does not adhere to a fixed uh, place, rather it remains a non-discursive entity, a radically other characterized by indiscipline that continues to enable new ways of knowing. Uh, in Ray's verses, there exists an elementary tension between meaning and absence of meaning, uh, a sort of a vacuum where sense should be and simultaneously an abundance of meaning. And this is what Walter de la Mer, uh, says about nonsense. Whether linguistic or situational, absurd, illogical, and bizarre, nonsense, as Eliot said, is not a vacuity of sense, but parody of it, and that is the sense of it. Shukumar Ray's genius helped him acquire the Western and indigenous tradition and reshape it with his individual talent. His work often showed translinguistic foolery, using of Latinate expressions, like in Heshuram Hushiar, which is a takeoff of Conan Doyle's Professor Challenger, where we meet Hanglatherium, Chillanosaurus, comic Latinization of the vernacular. Uh, Yet another instance of scholarly exhibitionism of the emerging Indian elite author. One intriguing feature of Abul Tabul is its beginning and the last verse, as I was saying at the very beginning of my talk. The collection begins with Abul Tabul and ends with the same, completing the cycle of his thoughts, uniquely Shukumar's own. The introductory verse champions the idea of madness. The, in, the entry point to the exclusive world of the poet a world without rules, bizarre, wondrous. In the end, this Shapundula carries him to the hazy nights among the cloud, Megmuluke Jabarage, hazy nights among the cloud through moonlit wheels and shadows, rainbow shrouds. Shukuman designed the final draft of Abul Dabul from his sick bed. Sometime in 1920, he wrote a rather long confidential letter to his friend. Prashanta Chandra Mahalanobish, who was very much a member of the, of the, of the, of the Monday club and uh, uh, 
often, and I'm very close uh, friend of Shukumar. Uh, Shukumar's apprehension and anxiety is quite evident in his own words, and I, and I quote, uh, I am feeling, I'm feeling for a few days that a big crisis, a turning point is coming in my life. A strong belief is taking shape in my consciousness and that must be death and nothing else. This is my translation. I would love to read the original words of Shukumar. Uh, Death Kabul Kabul was published in, on, on, on 19 September and the last few lines of the dream song indicate how he was living in a shadow of death. Akeem, and the, and the translation goes, um, uh, Akeem primordial lunar chin, the nightmare's nest with bunchy frill, my drowsy brain such glimpses steep and all my singing ends in sleep. This is Professor Shukanta Chaudhary's translation. Uh, as rightly said by Chotujit Rai, I do not know of any humorist who could jest in this spirit at the meeting point of life and death. So with this, I end my presentation on Shukumar Rai. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Bhutaputta. Um, can you hear me? Yes, yes, sure, sure, yes. Okay. Thank you for your enlightening lecture, which took us back to our childhood and somehow made us go deep beneath the apparent innocence. Yes. But there are times when only nonsense can make good sense prevail. But, um, <laughs> okay, now I hope you may want to open this session for interaction from our audience. Uh, should yes, I read yes, the... yes, yes, please do, please do. Okay, Hello. should I read the question for you? Yes, yes, yes please, please. I am Avila Mukhopadhyay from Bakura Christian College. I am a student of Bakura Christian College. And I want to say something to Matt. Uh, when I was little, I read the book, Havul Tavul, I liked that very much. And even today I like that. But uh, when today I read the book, I find that the poems are actually not meaningless and senseless. In the world when words change the meaning with time, for the addition, for the uses, for the abuses, for all these kind of things, words change meaning sometimes. And it's, uh, the evolution of words are continuing. But the work now seems to make something permanent, as if the meaning change with time, the work itself is permanent because it has no meaning at all. Because we, we can find meaning, but the words, the words are the, not playing any role of making any uh, particular meaning. And if you find the role of meaning and words, the work is more permanent than the most important works of others. So what do you think about that? I I, uh, I I did not get the last part of your of your question. Okay. When the other poems yes. are trying to mean something or indicating something, the work Abul Tabul by Sukumar Rai is not indicating something particular because the words are meaningless. To be uh, very lucid, the words are not indicating something particular. And it is only the rhyme that making us enjoy, uh, make, makes it enjoy. And the work is more prominent because the words are not playing any meaning word role, signifier signified role. That's what I am trying to say, and I want to know your observation on that. Yes, I, if, I, if, I understood. If after, yes, if after 50 years, 100 years, someone is reading the book, the he would enjoy the same thing what I am enjoying today. Okay, I understood Ab uh, Abila. Thank you for the question. Uh, I think I must, uh, uh, before answering and before sharing my views, I must uh, read out the apologia. I hope you understand Bangla. So I'll read the Bengali uh, uh, one. Uh, 
যাহা আজ কুটি যাহা উদ্ভট যাহা অসম্ভব তাহাদের লইয়াই এই পুস্তকের কারবার ইহা খেয়াল খেয়াল রসের বই সুতরাং সে রস যাহারা উপভোগ করিতে পারেন না এ পুস্তক তাদের জন্য নহে visible meaning for that matter so i think that is perhaps that is the reason that it is nonsense by virtue it is disorderly right at the beginning as i said uh, it is disorderly in nature it is indisciplined in nature uh, it is absurd it is bizarre in nature so uh, that that disorderliness that indiscipline uh, nature is its virtue again it's out of the <laughs> Sorry? It's out of the it's out of the complication of today's poetry. It it what is out of the complication of today's poetry? Uh, uh, the work of Sukumar, I will the poems of Sukumar. Yes, that's the what com- I'm saying. That uh, yes. you know, nonsense again is. Uh, uh, I think when I read Sukumar's Abul Tabul, uh, you might differ again. But what I found is. Shukumar Rai's Abul Tabul again is very culturally specific. I mean, he is uh, talking about the time his own Brahmo ideas are also very clear. His uh, his his uh, uh, his uh, caricature against that kind of obsession. Even he is doing that with his own brother Shubhinath, who has been a very uh, uh, you know very uh, who has been wholeheartedly involved into the Swadeshi movement at that point of time. bringing buying in swadeshi goods and bringing it at home and that's what shukumar writes that's what in fact uh, lila mujumdar writes in his book in her book shukumar rai that uh, he he used to bring everything and shukumar therefore wrote a song uh, caricaturing and parodying what his own brother is doing right so therefore and that caricature that parody is again meaningless if you have to understand the meaning you have to understand it in your own way right so it it has a kind of sliding signification uh it has a cultural specificity at the at the same time and because it its nature is as as shukumar himself is saying that it is khyal rosh right so by virtue of being a khyal rosh uh, by virtue of being into the world of bizarre into the world of absurdism it is indiscipline right so i i don't know whether i answered uh, correctly or whether i could satisfy you okay oh, thank you okay thank you uh, abid lal and now madam uh, yes, there yes. is a question from borun naha um, yes, yes, naha or brother okay so he has two questions borun if you are on you can put your questions borun no i'm not able yeah yes, you are okay i have already put my first question that is visible in the chat box okay madam i will request you to read the question in the chat box in the answer okay uh, may i read it out for you varun and madam yes okay. yes sure okay. sure please do okay okay the varun has put this question number 1 um the primary targets of his nonsense rhymes are the boys not the girls the presence of women characters is also minimal in the volume the imagery used seems also patriarchal Can you please elaborate on this gender issue in relation to the representation of the women in the late 19th century or early 20th century Bengal? It's most significant when we know that uh, the women members, especially the daughters of the Ray family, were quite active in the intellectual world. Uh, thank you for this question. Yes, that is something which even I have thought about uh, uh, in my in my own way when I was reading. Uh, but uh, when i was reading rereading abul tabul and other verses of shukumar rai even i have thought about the same and uh, thank you for putting up this question and i think this is this needs further reading even i am into the process of finding out why is it uh, one thing i would like to share with you uh, if you can get hold of uh, of of uh, leela mujumdar's book on shukumar rai you will find that uh, she writes that uh, uh, and that is something which i have gathered uh, of course it needs more 
uh, research and more 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 probing into it uh, is that uh, uh, in the nonsense club or in the non when the nonsense club was formed uh, all the members of the house they used to perform in act caricature uh, certain plays and uh, shukumar used to uh, bring in uh, all the you know he used to use he used to make the best out of the waste that is how he used to do it you know with the makeups and all and all the members of the family used to participate and uh, but when the when the when the monday club monda shomelon was uh, was established and we find most all the members are men as you have said right he said very right he said uh, i have uh, what i have read in in the book is that uh, uh, the the women they were uh, they were again as you have said gendered roles you know stereotyped roles they used to Uh, prepare for uh, monda shambelon because it was monda shambelon so picnicking was a very important uh, element of monda shambelon uh, so uh, they used to prepare food and they were, they were listeners they were they were not active participants they were listeners mm-hmm. and in fact uh, i must i really don't have a clear cut answer to your question as i have said that it needs real probing and uh, uh, as you have said punnalota shukolota all of them are so uh, they are they are names in their own field you know so why is it that shukumar never included them uh, now of course again shukumar uh, uh, was in continuous uh, communication when he was in england uh, with punnalata particularly through letters uh, letters written to his father were mainly about the politics of the time and the and the and the and the, uh, and the Uh, you know and his course that he was going through in in manchester and going to different parts of the country and meeting with tagore and talking about tagore and some uh, things like that and letters to his mother were were mainly about uh, giving uh, sp- you have to send in spices i need these these uh, spices and these things and letter to uh, his sister punnalata and others or mainly about give me tatto komodi patrika send me probashi send me uh, bharati and things like that so it is quite clear that uh, he shared an intellectual um, uh, you know intellectual uh, exchange of thoughts and ideas with his sisters but uh, again of course even i am questioning the same that why is he not in, why has he not included uh, in uh, his uh, Mm, uh, the women of his house into into uh, in 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 abu tabul or in other verses and again but then again uh, at the same time i'm thinking uh, that uh, he has also criticized or rather critiqued the babu shampradaya the babu community of the time and their uh, you know their eccentricity their their uh, their obsession with the self trying to imitate or ape the customs becoming elite um, and trying to get the maximum uh, trying to get the maximum opportunity that they can so i think uh, yes uh, again as i said it needs more reading so i really can't give you a one line answer that this is what happened and this is this did not happen but this is what i have gathered from reading his uh, about him uh, from from leela mujumdar and other writers at the same time yes thank you thank you uh varun you have got the answer the first question uh, i'll move to the second before that i would like to uh, read it out and read out what my colleague ganesh hamanto has yes, put next question always makes me nervous yes <laughs> yes okay fortunately or unfortunately technology uh, bird my barbarian feet <laughs> allow me to congratulate you on an eminently enjoyable and erudite lecture firstly i wanted to congratulate on the title of your paper i am intrigued and fascinated by the oblique uh, that punctuates uh, that is divides and joins sense and nonsense according to kuntaka a 10th century sanskrit language poetic language is essentially oblique avantabol is great poetry so your title and bit obviously hits upon the essence of um poetry as also of language and life 
in that they devolve from the oblique, even opaque articulation at once necessary and impossible semantic and ontic of sense and nonsense. As for the theory of nonsense, Wittgenstein and Deleuze have said things about it. Lockhart's remark in the metaphor of the subject and sorry that the essence of language is blah 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 implies that language is essentially nonsense. If language is the house of being, Heidegger, then light true is essentially nonsense. So this is That's what. Wonderful, Thank you. That's wonderful. I think that needs another presentation. <laughs> okay. Uh, Anita, thank you for your question and observation, obviously. And there uh, is Arno Ghoshal. I would, I would just like to add, uh, sorry, Professor Khan, I, I interrupted. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, I just want to, uh, I, I would like to add one thing that I, uh, when I was uh, preparing this talk, I, I came across uh, Buckley's book, you know, the, uh, I think the name of the book is uh, The Morality, uh, the morality of laughter, as, as, as far as I remember, and where Buckley is actually talking about Wittgenstein, and uh, it, it, it says that Wittgenstein was uh, um, acutely aware of uh, laughter, and uh, uh, he suggested, uh, he once suggested that a philosophical, that a serious philosophical work might uh, entirely consist of jokes. I, I, I just read that, so when I was uh, doing uh, research on this uh, uh, nonsense. I'll just uh, addition to what you have said. Okay. Uh, thank you, Anita. And then we move on to uh, the uh, no, post by Arunno Ghoshal. He says, and these lines always get me goosebumps. Thank you so much, Professor Gothakutta, for such a comprehensive talk on the evolution of nonsense writing. Uh, as to the future of these writings and their composers, what will the intended primary objective while composing these texts be in course of, say, 10 or 15 years if this same pattern of evolution continues, especially when means are at play and they have taken the onus of expressing them in a more relatively manner to the readers of the current generation, uh, already satiating the needs of the catharsis of a sarcastic mind. What's your vision? Difficult to elaborate on that, I don't know, but thank you for the question. It, I think it has, again, uh, initiated more, uh, uh, you know, engagement, intellectual engagement into it. Uh, really, I, I really can't, uh, uh, you know, give you a direct answer to that. Uh, Memes are again, they have taken the onus of expressing them in a more relatable manner to the readers. Yes, I think uh, nonsense, but yes, I think one thing uh, can be uh, one, one uh, I, I, I read few debates about nonsense, uh, whether uh, it, it can be a, a, a discipline on its own. Mm. And there are few few critics who talks about nonsense being a dis becoming a dis discipline, but uh, I think if that happens, then it will again uh, take up take up a canonical status, uh, which is not nonsense really. Uh, but uh, again. Uh, 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 I don't know. I think your your question has uh, led me to deeper thoughts, and I'll keep that in mind. If you can share your mail ID, or or I can share my mail ID, uh, we can definitely uh, engage into that more. Yes, thank you. Uh, I just missed a presentation. I thought of uh, showing it, but I don't know whether it is now at all needed. Uh, it's fine. Yes, yes, it is visible. I have the presentation ready. Uh, we have already uh, one of my colleagues. Piali Chondo Galibi has uh, insisted yes. on the PowerPoint presentation. Oh, okay. I, I'll try to make it visible then, uh, just quickly. It's just, it, it has nothing much to add to what I have said, but uh, just few, you know, pictorial representations. Of course, my PPT won't be, um, won't be, you know, in any way uh, extraordinary, but I have tried to make it a little more colorful so that uh, 
it looks much like nonsense that way. Uh, I'm trying to. Um, yes, is it uh, visible? I think it will be. I'll, I'll make it a slideshow. Quickly. Is it visible? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes. So I have. I have selected this color. I don't know why. I felt maybe this looks brighter and delightful in this rather very grim picture that we have around us. Uh, and this is, as I was saying, the earliest nonsense written by a German who died in 1210. And this is the on the right hand side is the uh, is the English translation, and on the left hand side is the German uh, original. Uh, this is the few cover pages of Bengali children's magazine. This is Balok, which was edited initially by Ganoda Nondini Devi and later on taken up by Tagore himself. So this is few illustrations. Here you can see Shadbhai Chamba, if you can see the cursor. And here is another illustration. And this is the uh, this is a this is a poem. Chora rather. And this is Jogindranath Shortar's Kukumunir Chora. Uh, and you can see the illustration of Akanure, very popular in, 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 in Bengal imagination. Uh, and here is, uh, I couldn't find the uh, 1913 original uh, 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 illustration of Shondesh, but this is after the revival in 1961. On the left hand side is the 1988 illustration, and on the right hand side is the 1990 illustration. So, there, uh, Mashik Potro, Shachitra Mashik Potro, uh, Nila Mojumdar, Nolini Dash, or Shotto Chitra Shampadita, that has, has been mentioned here. And uh, as I said, double double rhymes without reason. Uh, and uh, here he clearly says, I kapamon kunchiye badhon, jagiye nachon tadhim bhin, kunchiye badhon. So it again reminds me of the dissenting voice of the prince in Tashit Desh. That whole idea. Uh, human emotions exaggerated. Look at his expression. Babu, head of Richard Boro Babu sitting. Very inconsequential, but uh, excessive anger that he has lost his mustache. And you find similar kind of exaggeration of emotion in Chobio Bolpo, which is another, uh, 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 another of Shukumar's wonderful imagination, creative imagination, where you see the how the, the pictures, the, the paintings, the sketch, complement what rather endorses what Shukmar has said. Rage Agun Hulen Baba Shakal Patashune. Look at the, the situation of Baba. Uh, and mother is crying because the son is being beaten up by the father because he couldn't get good marks. Uh, the blighty cow and Babu. As I said, Keri Kata, Eje Chok Chok Chul Chata, Tai Tukha Teri Kata, Shona Choshma Ata Nashikai. So this is how the Babu looks in the poem Babu, which is again uh, in the collected edition of Shukmara. And this is the Tashkuru with the muffler here, quite similar to this one. And typically aping the elite customs, uh, the emergent class of the Babus. Mm, and the Tash Guru has a dhulu dhulu choke, that's what Shukumar writes. And here also we find a very grave looking, very close to Hashi Nished of, uh, of the Griffon Lane. And this is another poem, Tejian, where we find another representation of that same Babu, the Bhadrulok community. And Chole Chok Khaj Khaj, Rage Goj Goj, Juta Moch Moch Tane, Guru Kotmot Chori Pot Pot, Lathi Chot Pot Hane. So, you can see how he is playing with words and sounds. Kach kach, gaj gaj, moch moch, kot kot, pot pot, chot pot, bhag bhag, bab bab, and so on. Uh, this is from Khai Khai, the collection. Here is the rule of 21 in Kushiyain, as I was saying. The machination. It's a rule. It, it's, a, it's a reign of dogmatism, strict rule. Anything that you go, if you go beyond the, even if you sneeze, you will be penalized for that. So that is something that uh, is very close to Tashit Desh. Uh, here is War and Peace, Narod Narod. Very interesting and 
if we look at the two people fighting here, where the one is trying to speak in Indianized English, Chupra uh, or Spikti not, and here is that Brahmin probably, because here we can see this, uh, this, this thread. And he's wearing a boot, but without socks. He's wearing boot and with socks and with a shirt. So the, dis so the discrimination is quite visible here in the, in the picture uh, that Shukumar draws here. I think it, it, it endorses what the poem itself has. Uh, signs and Shukumar, again we see this uh, Kunor call, reminding of, uh, uh, of uh, Bellows' food machine of uh, uh, Chaplin's modern times. And here is that Kunur call, the uncle's invention. And here is the pursuit of signs where this child is wailing uh, in utter despair. What will he do with Because this man is advancing towards him with that penetroscope uh, to pierce into his brain and see what is there inside and how intelligent he is. And look at his attire, boot, uh, dhoti, kind of a shirt. And he is advancing towards this boy. So obsession with science. And this is the Punch uh, comic journal that I talked about, uh, which is the first volume. And these are the few books that I referred to while presenting this, of course, this primary text and Shaito Shamogrol, Vira Mojumda's book, Shibaji Bandhabadha's book, Tagore's Loko Shahito, Udhadir Boshu's Prabhundo Shankar. And if, if Shomrita says, then I can share the list as well for the students to access. Uh, yes, yes, sure, sure, sure. Yes, so I can send the list to Shomrita uh, if, if, uh, if she wants it for the students to get hold of the books and prepare for their uh, Yes, examination. So that is all. And if anybody is interested, you can definitely get back to me through uh, email. This is my mail ID. I, I would be happy to, to interact with anybody who wishes to you know, share his or her thoughts with me. Um, so that is the presentation that I had. Not much, but uh, yes. Well, thank you very much, Krishna Gupta, for the presentation. I hope our audience will be benefited by that. And uh, any more questions? I should look at the chat column. Um, no, everybody has thanked you. If, if the questions come later on, Professor Khan, then you can definitely mail it to me. I will be very happy as, yes. as uh, Aaron Nock's question. I would ask Aaron Nock to mail uh, his questions to me and I would definitely get back to him. Uh, Dr. Khan, uh, I, have, I had another question. Because I have to forward two questions. If it is allowed, well, well, Burun, I was going to read it out because it was uh, perhaps the last question of this session. Uh, okay, if I, that I was also uh, thinking of putting forward the third question, which is in fact the last question. Uh, if, if you permit, the organizing team and the man permit, uh, then I can. Yes, yes, sure, sure, one. please, please. Yes. This, 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 the, this third question or the last question has cropped in my mind. Uh, seeing the presentation that you have, the PPT presentation that you have just shown. So, if you, if you allow, I can put for the time. Yes, sir, yes, please yes. do. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, uh, so this, uh, you, can, you can put for the second question to Madam, and I'm taking the third one. Well, well, well. Then. Uh, uh, Boru, you can get back to me from email also, I think. Uh, that also will help you. I'll definitely, madam. I'll definitely. Uh, yes, I'm please. just awestruck with your uh, presentation. I'm, I'm just floored. Brilliant presentation. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Thank you so much. I have just uh, tried. You know, this. I think Shomrita has given me, and Onig, of course, and Professor Khan, definitely, who has given me this opportunity for this wonderful interaction. And I'm happy to get these difficult questions in a way. Uh, yes. Yeah, your effort has made it immense success. I'm charged up and inspired myself. Well, thank you so thank much. You. Thank I'm just noting down Arunov's uh, mail ID so that I can get back to him. And uh, I think Arunov has also noted down the ID. Borun, you can uh, you can definitely okay. get back to me through yeah. mail. I'll yeah, be yeah, very I'll happy post to do that. Post my mail ID right now. Yes, yes. And, and <clears throat> should we go on to read the questions out then, or um, Madam, you are you know. 
more inclined on uh, getting back them on email as you find fine it's i mean it's lunch time uh, it's almost 1:30 okay. so uh, i don't know i i have no issues okay i am going to read the second question put by borun uh, he says the other my thing the tempo the strokes the rhythm is the most integral part of a nonsense rhyme it primarily brings in the delight of reading these poems but in the translation this this rhythm is lost does this rhythmic loss affect only the delight of reading or it also affect the inner meaning the sense of the poems if that, you that how a, yes that is again a wonderful question i think it is a it is a question by borun yeah if, if this is borun second question second question that's a wonderful question borun uh i did not address the issue in my presentation because that would you know make it more long and long and long and unending in a way because uh, as it is i couldn't address many of the poems which i wanted to in my discussion because uh, uh i i i love to discuss uh, shukuma rai i have my own obsession with shukuma rai i don't know why but anyway uh, as you have rightly pointed out translation which i have been discussed and i am also intrigued with two translations in fact one by professor shukantu choudhury and one is by shotujit rai himself which was published by writers workshop and i don't i don't have a presentation book for that i can show you the book this is how the cover looks like and uh, multiple des designs are there i mean multiple colors are there of course this is the one which i bought uh, and there are i think 10 poems by shotujit rai uh, Ten poems which he translated, uh, and if you read Shotujit Rai's translation, um, uh, uh, if you read Shotujit Rai's translation, I I show you the difference between them. Uh, one is Professor Shukanta Choudhury's translation, and one is uh, Shotujit Rai's translation. Uh, Professor Choudhury's translation of Kichuri, the poem. Uh, if i translate the first two lines and of course i hope you remember the original text hash chilo sajaro bakoron manina hoye gelo hash charu kemon eta jani na so hash charu bapachcho khati ni you know the way we can associate as you have very rightly pointed out the rhythm the sound that it creates you know that that reverberates in our mind uh, the 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 way that we read nonsense and it creates a sort of its own unique rhythm in case of shukumar day and now i read uh, shukantu das translation a pochard and a porcupine defying the grammarians combined to form a porcupine unmindful of their variants that is one the other translation by shotojit rai a duck once met a porcupine they formed a corporation which called itself a porcu duck a beastly conjugation of course there is a rhyme scheme there in both of the translations but somehow as i as you have said i find the very essence of nonsense uh, remains missing in the translation uh, at the same time i had another Uh, very, uh, uh, you know, I, I found the ending of Gopchuri and uh, and the and the ending of uh, the, the the ending of Gopchuri in Shukumar and the ending of Gopchuri in the translation by Shukantu Das uh, quite different. If I read the ending of Gopchuri, Gop ke bolle tumar amar Gop ki karu ke na Gope rami Gope tumi tai diye jai che na. That yes, is one. Exactly the and and uh, the and look at the end of Gopchuri, which is clearly talking about lords and masters. You know, very much the the immediate imagery, the immediate idea that comes to our mind is lords lords and masters, the Britishers. Uh, they think they own their facial hair. Oh, road to all disasters! It's whiskers now that make the man, and they are our lords and masters. So the ending is equivocal in a way. In case of Shukantu Das translation, uh, so. i think that again becomes a very significant issue in fact there is a collection of nonsense rhymes by uh, which is called the 10th rasa uh, i have very recently uh, uh, downloaded the book and i'm reading it uh, uh, of course translation again is an important issue here uh, 
Um, All the three translations are different from each other. Very, very different from and, each other. And the translation, translation from the Tenth Rasa, that book, is quite yes. close to the original, you know, uh, lines by Sutumar Rai. Mm. Though a translation can never be. Uh, sorry to interrupt, Burun, but in fact, if you read Shotujit Rai's names that Shotujit Rai gives for the for the poems, uh, yeah. for example, yeah. in Shuku, in Shukantudas translation, we find the land of Bomba God. Yeah. Bomba God, the kind of God concept which comes from sometimes in history, you know, we are familiar with our Barogunyas and all the God, the God Mandaron and God something. You know, the way we are associated uh, with the word God, the, the the way we are connected with the word God. That is missing in uh, Shotojit Rai's translation because he says land of Bombardia. You now it bombards our mind definitely. What can be Bombardia? But it, 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 it uh, the the essence of Bombagor again is missing. You now the Bombagor essence is again missing. Of course, it is Bombardia. The moment we read the name land of Bombardia, it again bring it takes us to a world of you know a different world altogether. What is that land of Bombardia? But that Bombagor. That uh, Amshatto Bhaja again, very difficult. Amshatto Bhaja. In fact, in this in this case, I would relate uh, it to the teaching as well. You know, when I had to teach Abul Dabol and to convince my students Amshatto Bhaja, who were mostly not Bengalis in my yes. in, in, in my case, I, it was an uphill task for me. How to convince them? How what what is the you know the fun of having Amshatto Bhaja? Like Share Bhutrish Bhaja, if I have to explain why did Shukumar name Share Bhutrish Bhaja, that is a very difficult task. Like he gave seven names to his Kherur Khata, Kherur Khata, Javeda Khata, Bhaltu Khata, Baje Khata. So, so, so these. That's the question, madam. Uh, this, this loss of tempo, this loss of reading in the translation, doesn't, yes. doesn't it affect the, uh, the nonsensical elements in the poem, which is the divine. I find it does. I find it does. For me, it does. For me, it does. And that is perhaps the reason that throughout my talk, I have continuously given the original name. No, I have talked about Kadguru and Kathukutu Guru rather than the old tickler. Yes, yes. You know, yes. Rather than the, the, the man of the wood. Yes, yes. Or the purloined mustache. You know? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, well, thank you, Gorun, for your engaging questions, and thank you, Professor Gothakurta, for your patient answers to them. And I think uh, Gorun has, you know, got his answer because yes, <laughs> trans involves, uh, a transportation of the entire cultural corollary with the text, but which sometimes we don't get in every translation. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, I think that, that I would, would in this context relate to another where my personal experience uh, when we read uh, Oedipus's translation of Watling and when we read Oedipus's translation of Fagels, I find a kind of similar problem. Somehow I find that seriousness, that grave seriousness, I find better in Watling. <laughs> okay, okay. That is different cases each time when you. <laughs> You know, move on from translation to translation. Mm -hmm. Well, I think there are no more questions. If there are any, please, you know, ask for yourself or put them in the comment or chat have, box. I have already put my uh, 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 mail ID in the, in the uh, uh, chat box. So... Uh, I will request all the listeners to check it out in the chat box. There is, you know, the email ID of our uh, speaker. Professor Gota Kutta has put. I can put it once again. Uh, well, I think there is, you know, not any other question from our listeners. And um, thank you. I, I would like to thank Professor Gota Kutta for this, you know, engaging, enlightening lecture. And uh, most of us, you know, all of us are benefited by this. Well, with this, um, the today web lecture series has come to its last minute, and I would like to call Professor Somrita De Mondol to pay the vote of thanks to our speakers and to our kind and patient listeners. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Sudip Da. Am I audible and visible? Yes, you are perfectly. Thank you, thank you so much. 
Now it is time for formally proposing the vote of thanks and at the outset I express my deep gratitude and thanks to the officer in charge of Government General Degree College Shalboni, Dr. Shantanu Dhar. I thank all our esteemed resource persons who, if I am allowed to get a bit personal, have been my very good friends for some long time now and one an endearing elder sister. All of them have meaningfully contributed to the true purpose of holding this web lecture series. Professor Rohan Hassan, Dr. Nondini Maiti, Professor Shukhendu Dash, and Professor Debolina Guhotakutta. Heartfelt thanks and gratitude on behalf of the Department of English. I also thank the faculty members from my institution and also other institutions who have actively participated in this two day web lecture series. All students, research scholars and one and everyone who have attended the sessions on the virtual platforms. I extend special thanks to three students outside my college who have volunteered to help me. Abirlal, who has single-handedly designed all the flyers and posters, Tomosha and Shantanu for shouldering all technical hurdles including the YouTube live streaming. Thank you so much. Last but not the least, I extend my heartfelt thanks to my colleagues in the department, two active members of the organizing committee, Professor Onik Shamonto and Professor Shudip Khan, wishing you all a very good day ahead. Hope to meet you all again. Thank you so much. But with this, <coughs> we um, officially end the session. Thank you all. Thank you all the listeners. Thank you all the speakers. Hope we, sh we shall meet again soon, as soon in any other platform or this, after this pandemic is over, we can meet physically and extend this uh, discussion on several other topics. So thank you all. And I am just putting an end to this web lecture series. Thank you.